In this video, we're going to talk about how to enable SSL in Jenkins. SSL certificates. We know that they're meant to help keep sensitive information encrypted as it traverses a network. But what if all of your traffic is on a private network? Do you still really need SSL certificates? Only you can answer that question. But in my opinion, that answer is yes. In many companies, SSL is offloaded to Apache or Nginx or maybe even a hardware appliance. However, with Jenkins, this is not necessary. In this video, we are going to look at one way that you can install a SSL certificate into a Jenkins controller. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller, version 2.289.3. This controller is running on CentOS 7.9. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. In the description below, there is a gist that's going to have all of the commands that we're running in this video. Here we are at our controller. The URL you can see is jenkins.planetpope.com and port 8080. That's not a typical HTTPS port that you would use. And we can see that the lock is struck through and tell here that our connection is not secure. So the first thing that we're going to do is enable the HTTPS port inside of Jenkins. So I'm going to go over to my shell and I'm going to become root. Now I could do this sudo, but for now, just to make it simple, I'm going to do root. I'm going to say vi etsy sysconfig. And this is sysconfig because I am on a CentOS based server. If you're running in a Debian based server, it would be an Etsy default. We'll go here, Jenkins. Let's go look for HTTPS port. You can see it's there. So right now, by default, it is disabled. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So I'm going to say insert 8443. Now I could set the port to 443, but that would mean that I would have to run my Jenkins instance as root. Any port below 1024 means I have to run it as root, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do sort of a standard 8443, and we will make 443 the real port a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and save this. Get out of there and save it. And let's go ahead and restart our process. So this will take just a few seconds. So let's go back over here. While it's coming up, let's go ahead and go to 8443 and go to HTTPS. So in theory, once it finishes starting up, we should land on a secure, quote unquote, page. We can see here that a potential security risk ahead, that sort of makes sense because we haven't actually installed a certificate yet. All we've done is enable HTTPS. So I'm gonna click on advanced. It says that Jenkins Planet Pope 8443 uses an invalid security certificate. It's self-signed. Well, let's take a look at that certificate and understand what it is. Since we turned on HTTPS within Jenkins, and remember within Jenkins we're running Jetty, so it issued a self-signed certificate, which is okay. I mean, that's, that's what it is. But if we go ahead and say, all right, I know that's okay, I accept the risk and then I go ahead and go in. Well, now I've got HTTPS and 8443. And if I take a look at it, the connection is not secure. That's okay. And all of that's exactly what I expect because again, I don't have a SSL certificate in place. But the first step that we have to do before we even deal with the SSL certificate is enable that HTTPS port. Now that we have the HTTPS port enabled, now we're ready to go ahead and put our certificate in place. Before I started recording, I created a SSL certificate from zerossl.com. You can do SSL certificates however you want. Whether you have your own CA, you're buying them from a standard Digicert, GoDaddy, wherever you get your SSL certificates from, follow that process. I chose zero SSL because number one, free. And number two, it gives me a certificate that all browsers understand without having to install that SSL certificate into the browser, thinking self-signed. I have nothing against self-signed, but to keep it simple for right now, I just wanted my browser to be publicly signed. So let's go ahead and flip over to our shell again. 
And for my use case, I am going to put my SSL certificate inside of my Jenkins home. This is up to you. Right now, Jenkins is running as a Jenkins user. So in order to be able to read these files, which will be the key and the certificate, I need to put them somewhere that the Jenkins user can read them. And for my time right now, I'm just going to create a .ssl directory. And you can choose to do whatever you want. This is just how I'm going to do mine. Also, the way that I name my files is I name them what they are. So the domain name and then key. And here I'm going to grab my key file. So I'm going to grab the key. We can take a look at it. It's just standard RSA keys. That's what I'm using here. Whoops, I went too far. Undo. There we go. I want to get rid of that last line. There we go. And all of that looks good. And I'm also going to go ahead and create my certificate. Whoops. Jenkins.com slash CRT. Now you can name it whatever you want. Now with zero SSL, it has an intermediate certificate as well. When you're generating your certificates, your CA may have an intermediate certificate or multiple intermediate certificates. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a single file that has both my certificate for Jenkins.PlanetPope.com and also the intermediate certificate in it. Let me show you what that really is. So if we take a look here, about halfway up, we're going to see where I have an end certificate and begin certificate. This top certificate is the Jenkins.PlanetPope.com. This bottom certificate is my intermediate certificate. So I'm just including both of these in this file that is named Jenkins.PlanetPope.CRT. Now, since I am root, so I sudo to su, we can see here that my files are owned by root, but I'm inside of my Jenkins home directory. So the thing that I need to do is go ahead and change the ownership so the files are owned by Jenkins. So we can see here that now I've re-owned var lib Jenkins, which is my Jenkins home directory by default on CentOS. And I changed the owner and the group to Jenkins. And we can see here with both files, they are both owned by Jenkins. Next up, we need to make one more change to our sysconfig file, or if you're on Debian-based in Etsy default. So I'm going to do vi Etsy sysconfig Jenkins. I'm going to go to the bottom of the file and go down to Jenkins args. And at the end of this file, I'm adding in two parameters. And this will be in the gist. I'm adding in a dash dash HTTPS certificate. So that's going to be the full path to my certificate, jenkins.planetpope.com.crt. And I'm adding in an HTTPS private key. Again, varlibjenkins.ssl, jenkins.planetpope.com.key. And make sure it is in the quotes. It is. So this is in the Jenkins args, not Jenkins Java args, but Jenkins args. This is at the bottom of the file within CentOS. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and save it. And let's go ahead and restart our process. And give this just a couple of seconds. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page. And now look, our lock is there. Let's take a look at the lock. Connection is secure. Let's take a look at this. You are, surely con you are securely connected to this site, verified by zero SSL. Let's click on more information. And if we take a look at our certificate, so we're on security tab and this is Firefox, view certificate. We can see here jenkins.planetpope.com is there. Here's our intermediate cert for zero SSL, and then finally the root certificate for user trust. But here's the thing. Let's close this out and take a look again at our login screen. We can see that I am completely secure, HTTPS and 8443. However, I can still go directly to port 8080, and I want to completely disable my port 8080 traffic. I do not want any insecure traffic going into my controller. So how do we do that? Let's go back over to our sysconfig file. Again, this is CentOS if you're on Debian, that's a default Jenkins. Let's edit our sysconfig and let's look for 
port. And we'll find that 8080 is near the top, roughly. And you'll notice here in the comment, we need to set it to minus one to disable. So that's what we want to do. So I'm going to say insert minus one. And that's it. We just need to disable that port completely. So let's go ahead and do our restart one more time. And as this restarts, notice what we have here. We're still sitting on Jenkins 8080. I'm giving it just a second to restart. And now let's refresh. And the connection was reset because there is no port 8080 listening anymore on that instance. So now that we've completely disabled our insecure traffic, port 8080, off of our controller, let's go back over to our secure side. So if I go to HTTPS and go to 8443, we're still good. I get my login screen. But reminding people that they need to go to 8443 is going to become, let's call it painful. Because if I go right now to just 443, in fact, let's just do HTTPS because by default, 443 is the default HTTPS port. Nothing's going to happen because I don't have a listener for 443. In some places, you might use a load balancer that would take care of routing that 443 to 8443, or you're using Nginx or maybe Apache and doing some redirects. But we can do this simply just by using Firewall D. So let's go back over to our shell one more time. Let's go ahead and clear this. So here's where we're going to start. The first thing we're going to do is add the HTTPS service. That's successful. Next up, we are going to add a forward port for 443 to 8443. And that's showing successful. And in fact, let's go ahead and verify that that actually took by doing list forward ports. So 443 is forwarding to 8443. Next up, we need to basically save these two changes that we just made. So we're doing firewall command runtime to permanent. Think of that as command S or control S. And then finally, let's go ahead and reload all the changes in the firewall. That was successful. Now let's go back over to our browser and check out what happened. As we can see here, port 8443 is still listening. Now, it's good to still go ahead and have 8443 open and available for check. We just won't publish it to our end users. So we can use that to make sure that, okay, if I'm getting to 8443 directly, then I know that everything is working correctly in case that I've got a problem going from 443 to 8443, then I can isolate that to a firewall D problem. Now, let's go ahead and get rid of the 8443 off the end. So all that we have is HTTPS Jenkins.PlanetPope.com. And we can see here that it went ahead and ran successfully. So we have HTTPS JenkinsPlanetPope.com, no 8443. Finally, there's one more thing that we should do. I'll leave it up to you if you're going to do it, but you should do it. Let's go ahead and log in. And I'm logging in as somebody that has ability to access Manage Jenkins. And what you'll see here is that it appears that your reverse proxy setup is broken. When I set up everything, I didn't have SSL. So we can see here from our Jenkins URL that it is still reflecting what my Jenkins URL was when I did my initial installation, which is HTTP, no S, jenkins.planetpope.com colon 8080. Well, what I want to do is change this to HTTPS and get rid of the 8080 and the colon. So now it's just HTTPS jenkins.planetpope.com because that's what I want all normal usage to be. So let's go ahead and save that. If we take a look again at Manage Jenkins, now our reverse proxy error is gone. Although I showed you one way of doing SSL with Jenkins, why would you not want to do it this way? Well, you might already have a standard way of handling SSL certificates within your organization. Maybe you're used to offloading those to Nginx or Apache or some other appliance to make your SSL certificate management easier. The other reason, and I see this a lot, is sometimes people want to go ahead and make it extremely easy on their end users and automatically redirect any request for HTTP automatically to HTTPS. Now, as you could see, when we were doing the port forwarding, there was no way to do an HTTP redirect within Firewall D. 
So if that's a requirement for you, you're going to need a way to do that redirect using Apache, Nginx, or maybe some load balancer to take care of that automatic redirect for you. However, if you know that you only want people going to your HTTPS endpoints, then redirects may not be a big deal to you. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.